And now, Maverick Hockey fans, at this time, we'd like to take a few moments to recognize our senior hockey players. First, a defenseman from Lamp Lampman, Saskatchewan, number 24, Edwin Hookinson. Majoring in finance and accounting and an alternate captain this year, Edwin is a three-time WCHA scholar athlete and three-time WCHA all-academic selection. Named a COSIDA Academic All-American last year, Edwin ranked second in the nation in blocked shots his junior season and for his career has tallied eight goals and 21 assists for 29 points in 119 games. Edwin's parents are Reg and Val. Thank you, Edwin. <laughs> Next, a defenseman from Coon Rapids, Minnesota, number 18, Ian Scheid. A four-year letter winner, Ian is a three-time WCHA All-Academic selection. A true Iron Man, Ian hasn't missed a game over the course of his time with the Mavericks, and when it's all said and done, will stand as one of the top scoring defensemen in school history. A two-time All-WCHA third-team pick, Ian has 24 goals and 68 assists for 92 points in 154 career games. Ian is majoring in interdisciplinary studies, and his parents are Jim and Sandy. Thank you, Ian. A forward from Woodbury, Minnesota, number 26, Josh French. Majoring in management, Josh is a three-time WCHA scholar athlete and three-time WCHA all-academic selection. One of the top penalty killers and defensive forwards in the nation, Josh has tallied 12 goals and 23 assists for 35 points in 144 games during his four years with Minnesota State. Josh's parents are Monty and Aaron. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> A forward from Pacific Palisades, California, number 23, Nick Rivera. A four-year letter winner and two-time captain, Nick is a three-time WCHA scholar athlete and three-time WCHA all-academic selection. Over the course of his four years with the Mavericks, the management major has scored 30 goals and assisted on 26 others for 56 points in 146 games. A vocal and physical leader for the Mavericks, Nick's parents are Rick and Dana. Thank you, Nick. A forward from Rocky River, Ohio, number nine, Charlie Girard. A four-year letter winner, Charlie, is a two-time WCHA All-Academic selection. Over the course of his four years with the Mavericks, he has scored 30 goals and assisted on 36 others for 66 points in 116 games. One of the fastest skaters in the country, Charlie is majoring in interdisciplinary studies, and his parents are Alan and Sally. Thank you, Charlie. A forward from Bremerhaven, Germany, number six, Parker Toomey. An interdisciplinary studies major and named all WCHA second team last year, Parker is one of the all-time top scoring players for the Mavericks. Named the recipient of last year's three-star award, Parker enters tonight ranked sixth all-time at Minnesota State with 44 goals and 84 assists for 128 points in 147 games. Parker's parents are Trey and Anka. Thank you, Parker. A forward from Mannheim, Germany, number 20, Mark Michaelis. A three-time All-WCHA First Team selection and two-time team captain, Mark is a three-time WCHA All-Academic selection, twice named Minnesota State's team most valuable player. Mark owns the school record for career shorthanded goals and will finish his career as one of the school's all-time offensive players. In 143 games with the Mavericks, Mark has racked up 68 goals and 86 assists for 154 points to rank third on the school's career scoring list. A sport management major, Mark's parents are Boris and Sylvia. Thank you, Mark. 110 wins, two McNaughton Cups, a Sauer Trophy, and two trips to the NCAA tournament for this group, and all seven are graduating at the end of this semester. Thanks for everything, fellas, and best of luck to you and your teammates from everyone here in Mankato as you continue on with the rest of the season. It truly is great to be a Maverick.
The NCAA promotes good sportsmanship by student athletes, coaches, and spectators. We request your cooperation by supporting tonight's participants and officials in a positive manner. Profanity, racial or sexist comments, or other intimidating actions directed at officials, student athletes, coaches, or team representatives will not be tolerated and are grounds for removal from the site of competition. Please join us in this commitment to fairness for all participants in tonight's contest. Thank you. The event center would like to remind fans that this is a smoke-free and vape-free facility. And Minnesota State Athletics would like to recognize Radiance Salon for being the sponsor of this year's Ice Crew. Your support of Maverick Hockey on ice Sir, and off is extremely appreciated. We come Stop back, by it's Radiance Game Show from downtown Mankato. On the heels of the biggest offensive production night in over 20 years, Mavericks return to the home ice one last time here in the regular season. It's senior night on a Maverick Hockey Weekend. Good evening, Don Westfall, Dan McCarker here in downtown Mankato. We welcome you to the Maverick pregame show, sponsored by Coldwell Banker Commercial Fisher Group. And Dan, a 10 0 win last night for this Maverick team over Alabama Huntsville, as dominating as we have seen them all season. For a long time, as a matter of fact. I thought they skated 60 minutes last night like they haven't been in. in I, I can't remember. It was incredible how hard they played all evening long. Another shot, uh, shutout for Dryden McKay, but he only had 11 shots on goal. The Mavericks put up 64 shots on goal, well over 100 as far as shots attempted. It was just dominating from the opening faceoff. And it'll be hard to replicate that again tonight, to be completely honest. I expect the win, but it'll be tough to outdo what they did last night. Yeah, we had a chance to talk to the both coaches. We'll hear their thoughts on tonight's contest right now. Let's bring in Mike Hastings for the Mavericks and Mike Corbett for Alabama Huntsville. Oh, it's what we talk about, you know, being a balanced human being and part of that is is I know everybody gets to see on Fridays and Saturdays the end result of if we win or if we lose and what their contributions might be numerically and what they're doing in those games what you don't get to see and I wish you could all have an opportunity as you did the mm -hmm. other night to see the, just the human beings that these guys are and um, I've said it multiple times I'm gonna miss this group we're all gonna miss this group um, we just want to make sure that we stick around and, and stay together as long as we possibly can. So they're excited about tonight. They're excited about uh, senior night. I know the underclassmen are excited about honoring that group. And, uh, you know, for us to get off to a good start would be a good a good idea tonight. And the I think so. You know what? I'm, I'm more one of the, we take the, you got to look at it as a new day, new fresh day and, and, and go after it and just be able to execute the things that we wanted to execute to start with. Like you said, in the first 15 minutes, yeah, we know we're going to give up shots. We know we're going to give up opportunities, but uh, just limit them. And, and uh, we want, we want the shots to be 40 to 11. You know what? That's okay. Or 35 to 11. That's okay. And we, we get a couple opportunities. We had two, two on ones and we had a four on and we had a four on two. When you play a team like this, you have to take advantage of those situations. So, you know what? You know, I think the mood is good. You challenge young men. They want to be challenged. And you know what? Like, like I said yesterday, to play these guys, um, the challenge is great. And now after uh, getting, getting our, our butts beat pretty good, you know what? We'll see what our guys are made of. All right. We thank both of their coaches for helping us out with the pregame show. And as we mentioned off the top, it is senior night. Now, again, while we have hockey coming up, playoff hockey coming up for you next month in March, nonetheless, last regular season game for seven very important seniors. Yeah, no question about it. They've got 110 wins, which you can match with anybody in the country over the last four years, the points that they put together. Uh, but the people, as much as anything else, the people that they are and the credit they've been to the university, some people will remember for a long time. And this is a group of seniors you talked about their importance off the ice on the ice as far as how the Mavericks go for the rest of this season. This is a group that last night, now granted, uh, you know, we had 10 goals <laughs> last night. All seven of them got in the scoring uh, column. These guys contribute on the ice heavily. Oh, they they have for four years now, too. So I, I remember Josh French's first goal. So yeah, it, this goes a long time. They've been doing it forever and I expect them to do it again tonight and for a long run coming up. Whether the Mavericks can uh, get a 10 nothing win, we don't know, but they'll go to work on it right when we come back after this timeout. fight what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming and the rocket's regular the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still Oh, 
see does that star-spangled banner wave o'er the land of the free and the I blame myself. I was thinking about when uh, Allie Palmer got tangled up in the words. Don Westfall and Dan McCarger back in downtown Mankato. Saturday night, a hockey closing out the regular season. Mike Hastings and his club last night, a uh, convincing, shall we say, <laughs> 10 to nothing Man. win over. Alabama Huntsville, Coach Mike Corbin on the other side for the Chargers. Uh, his team last night outshot 64 to 11. Uh, Mavericks last night officially, when we went off the air, Dan, we had some of the unofficial statistics officially. Mavericks last night, 108 attempted shots. We were talking about it after the first period that it was going to be the first time we'd ever seen that before. It is not a stat that is kept, so we don't know if that's a record, but it's got to be close. Marks. At the Division One level, it has to be close to an all-time record here at Minnesota State, minimally. See the numbers there. Mark Sinclair was the goalie of record last night, taking the loss. He actually was in the net for the first two periods, and when he left, it was a six-nothing game. Mavericks distribution in the goals very good. Three in the first, three in the second, four in the third. Mavericks last night, two for four on the power play. They were perfect 0 for one as far as killing off the low and power play opportunity that the Chargers had. It was a, a complete victory for the Mavericks. And again, they entered tonight in statistically in the standings much as they were last night. Five points ahead of Bemidji State. So uh, the magic uh, number is five as well tonight. It is. It went from uh, eight when we left down to five. But the Mavericks will not be able to uh, clinch the cup tonight. And then they will have to go up. And it would be an interesting weekend of hockey in Bemidji next weekend as the two teams tangle in state rivalries. The Mavericks obviously will be in control of things. but. Uh, Cannot win the McNaughton Cup here tonight. Not on the ice. They could win it this evening. Yes, later on, you are correct. If uh, if Bemidji should lose up in Alaska, the Mavericks, if they win tonight, would wrap it up. But that's the only way. But more likely than not, it's going to come down to next weekend with the Mavericks with a five-point lead and two three-point games to play. We talked last night that the Mavericks had done some switching as far as forward lines and combinations on power play. Um, Coach Hastings liked what he saw for the most part because the lines stay intact. And again, the Mavericks generating that kind of offense got going early. They actually uh, were held scoreless for about the first 15 minutes. They had hit two pipes during the, the, those 15 minutes, but once the scoring started late in the first, uh, they just continued to pile up. Well, we talked to Mike Corbett about that. He said, if you get in the first period scoreless, can you tell your guys, look, we just handled uh, a heck of a lot of pressure and we're okay. He said, yeah, we've done that. We've been able to use that. And he said, I, I can, you know, name specific instances, but he said that first one was a tough one. And then, you know, second, third ones were real backbreakers. Mavericks uh, last night, all but two guys in the lineup as far as offensively or from a defensive position, all but two, let's put it this way, I'll start over. All players that were in a position normally to score, which uh, will eliminate Dryden McKay from yeah. that one, uh, they did score, although Dryden McKay actually did get an assist against the Chargers in the one of the games back in October in the sweep over Alabama Huntsville. It's his uh, third career assist. Uh, other statistics, he owns virtually is at the top of everything nationally right now. Picked up another shutout, obviously, last night. 13 in his career, less than two years, nine in the season. And uh, he is uh, obviously making a very strong case for Hobie Baker honors. The interesting thing, though, even though it was a game like that, it didn't become a points game where you thought people were being selfish for the Mavericks. And that's what Mike Hastings was the most happy about. He said, I didn't really think it got to be because it can get to be real selfish in games like that. He said it didn't get that way. He didn't think. And we certainly didn't think so either. No. Gerard's there with a quick shot. Gerard's, uh, for those of you who didn't watch last night, actually uh, working in, from the center position this weekend. 
Jared Spooner is out. Don't have a timetable on his return back to the lineup, but outside of Spooner, all Mavericks are good to go after having last weekend off. Play yep. behind McKay there. Another thing that Mike Corbett said to us, you know, we had a two on one, a four on two, said we have to take care of and uh, take advantage, uh, take advantage of those chances. And they didn't last night. He said if we can do that tonight, he said maybe we get a different outcome. Souter trying to get one past the defenseman, but here comes Isaac back the other way. Lotten get it, and he's going to go off on a hooking call as he took McNeely down on the play. And the Mavericks will have an early power play again, two for four last night with the man advantage. Well, Mike Hastings said, if we can go five on five all night, we'll be happy. If it says we're five on four, we're happy. He said, we just don't want to go to the box a lot tonight on our end. And he says, if we can keep it five on five all evening long, we can run our four lines like we did last night, and we like our chances. 3.07 the time of the call against Ladigan for the hook. Crowd filling in rather nicely here, Don, as we're underway here early again on a Saturday night. We had last night in the building about 4,500 people in the building. Shied. Trying to feed one to Gerard out in front. Spun along the boards and charges are going to clear and send it out of the zone. Side lead pass there for Michaelis who carried in. Out of the far side for Souter. Shied, Souter on top of the circle. Oh, there one got redirected in toward the net, and then Sinclair just stuck the pad out with the toe and actually was able to push it just wide. Quick shot there, and that one wide of the net from Michaelis, but that was Toomey down low for the Mavericks, who had a, a good scoring opportunity. Very similar to what Drysidle did against the Wild last night. Oh, there's an excellent pass. Oh, Shy oh, just oh, played it ahead. Oh, Souter tips it wow. into a wide open net. And it's a 1 0 lead. Mavericks on the power play scoring. A little over four minutes gone here in the first. This is a Globetrotter type goal right here. This is incredible. Sinclair had no chance. We're going to look at it right here. That's the finish at the very end. But it was two passes prior to that that set up the goal for Souter. Souter, his sixth of the season. He had a goal last night in the contest, leading freshman scorer in the WCHA. Mavericks will go to work one more time in the zone. Jeremko there on the floor check. Now poked away. Here comes Smith. Mackey. That one set aside. Bouncy puck down over on the far side. Jeremko had an initial look. That wow. one, I think, is off the post, Dan. That was a really good opportunity and then a good shot that just came up off the post. So the Mavericks really put some serious pressure on here after they scored the power play goal. Shied with the point. He had a, a goal last night as well. In fact, Shied, a couple of guys, Shied along with Michaelis and Toomey moving up the scoring charts respectively for their career work here in Mankato. Shied now with 93 points. That's in 20th place among all Division One players as the puck played with the high stick. And as far as career scoring by a defenseman for Mavericks, and this is all time, both at the Division Two and One level. Shide right now also with the 92 points, now 93. He's in fifth place all time for defenseman scoring. Getting the rarefied air for yes. a bunch of these guys. I mean, you're talking guys like uh, Kurt Davis, Palmquist, Mike Weinkoff, yep. going back to the... Uh, Earlier, the you know, national tournament teams of the 90s, yeah, shy up there. And it's a guy who got off to at least goal scoring, a slow start to the season, but definitely has picked it up in recent weeks. Well, what do we do from here on out is going to decide what the legacy of this team really is. Bolio back up to the point. Lucas Bond. There's a shot and a quick save made by Dryden McKay. He knew he needed the TV timeout. We thank him. We'll take it. Mavericks on top. one nothing early in Mankato. Alabama-Huntsville. 
Dropping the 10 nothing decision last night. They find themselves down early again here tonight. A power play goal for Souter, Scheid, and Gerard assisting on that goal. Power play tally. And the Mavericks on top early 1 nothing to close out the regular season. Again, you saw the graphic going into the break with the senior night festivities already have taken place here in Mankato. I know during the intermissions we'll bring you some of the packages put together, the senior spotlights. In fact, Dan, I heard that the, the last one just released today was completed at 1 o'clock last night. Very believable. Then uh, they're really, really good. If you haven't had a chance to see them, they were being posted all week long. A uh, ton of work involved to put those together, and they're really, really impressive. Vincent is back, left off for a couple of players. Bolio will pick it up along the boards. Rodchick is going to dump one in. To the far side, will come, in fact, all the way out of the zone. Neudecker. Connor James tipped in. Sounder along the boards will just chip it out. Race for the puck, Jeffers and Michaelis. Jeffers gets there, plays to Neudecker, and it's driven back in. Big hit that Anna takes on the play, but the Mavericks are still able to clear, but it's out of play actually on the clearing attempt. We mentioned a few moments ago, all the Mavericks back and healthy again, except for one, Jared Spooner. He had a huge weekend a couple weeks ago when we had Northern Michigan in the building. Uh, not only the three goals, but uh, on the power or uh, fa face-offs, he was dominant in the circle as well. So that's a pretty big loss for the Mavericks. It certainly is. And people ask us, we don't know. You know, I mean, we you, we hear lower body injury. That's all we hear. Uh, we don't get any more information than anybody else does. Uh, and I don't know about his return, don't know anything like that. But it's a loss, no question about it, because he's a really good player. Door behind the net sweeps one out in front follow up there Dallas Gerads is around as well. Door again in the corner with puck possession. They were really good last night. This entire line was really really good. Carroll puts one in. Oh and it goes just off on the near side door and able to get there as rebound was given up. Rivera takes a couple of shots on this shift. Carroll down low. Rivera is on the near side, puts on the wrister, scores! Oh, Mark Sinclair didn't cover up the post, and Nick Rivera made him pay. We had just mentioned Rivera took a couple shots. Well, that's a good comeback right there. Great answer as Rivera gets the goal. And the Mavericks are on top 2-0, not even halfway through the first. Rivera went short side, and Mark Sinclair can't believe it. Looks over his right shoulder and said, how did that get through? But it did. He didn't have the post covered up. Probably could have come out a little bit more, but Rivera saw it, and he buried it. The Mavericks up to a two-goal lead. And against this club, that's a huge mountain to climb. Rivera, his seventh of the season at 7.07. Wood will knock it out to center ice. James will carry it into the zone. And on that attempt taken by Danchenko. Doer and Carroll on the assist of that play. Lutz chips it out of the zone. Jeremko steps into the play to take it away from Allen. Now behind the net, Smith. He'll play it back to the point and Scheid gets there in time to hold. Jeremko played down on net and Sinclair is able to pull that one out of some traffic and he'll take the face off in the zone. A little bit of hugging going on behind the net there. The fans not real happy about it. Reggie Lutz tangle up now along the wall here, but you got to expect that the Chargers are going to be a little owly after last night and see if they can get something going. They want to make this a half court game, Don, any way they can. They don't want to go five on five and they don't want to go five on four the short way, but they're going to even this one up. Officials are going to take both Smith and Wood off. Probably not a bad thing early on in the contest here before things start to escalate. Not Smith's first uh, time in the box this year. Not Wood's first time this weekend. <laughs> you are correct on both accounts. 
And probably the best case scenario coming out of this one for the Mavericks is that we'll probably go. I'm thinking four on four and that'll make the game even faster. Yep it's up on the board that way and yeah this is not the way the Chargers wanted it at all. The Mavericks have proven to be too fast five on five with more open ice four on four is even more dangerous. But I mean realistically Ryan McKay's goals against is one point three six the Mavericks already have two up on the board. It's going to take three to beat him tonight. And the likelihood is very good that the Chargers will not be able to come up with that. They haven't won on the road this season and they're playing the number two team in the nation right now. So they've dug themselves a hole that is most likely they're not going to be able to get out of. And there's still 12 minutes to go in the first period of play. I didn't see 10 happening last night Don I don't see 10 happening tonight but. Five is likely. Yeah. The way things are off right now that's for sure is off the draw Bolio will carry. You mentioned Dryden McKay's goals against which is it's for now it, it. It's just it's a number that this deep in the season it's hard to fathom and the fact is if we look at the national statistics he's like three tenths which is when you're talking numbers this small three tenths is unbelievable. And it sets up even a more interesting matchup next weekend because the guy who's number two in the country, he'll see in uh, Driscoll, Zach Driscoll from Bemidji State, as McKay will cover up on this one. Kind of surprised there wasn't a slash there. That happens sometimes. We see a stick go flying like that. Yeah, but Dryden McKay's numbers, one, now 1.32 goals against a 940 save percentage, um, that's just unheard of. It, do, it does not happen. No. Uh, and it's uh, he's played really well but the defense in front of him they play as well in front of him as any team does in the nation. Zmolik plays it ahead for Michaelis drop passes Zmolik will carry into the zone. Left off a shide. Watched by Jeffers and then he tried to put one down Dasher and fanned on it so everything will be reset. Charlie Girard. Takes it into the zone, works around one defender, tries to go in on that, and then he's going to yep. collide with Sinclair and Gerard's going to go. go. To box, yeah. yeah. Gerard's going to go to the box for charging the goaltender, and he's the one who ended up uh, taking the, the worst of it. I don't know but if he uh, collided so much with Sinclair, maybe even a little bit of the post. Yeah, I think he caught a lot of post. But he's coming into the box either way. Fans aren't real happy about it, but no, that's a call you got to make. Oh, no question. Yep. Yeah, I mean, he ended up getting tangled up. His feet uh, got tangled up in uh, the defender, and he came sliding in the goalie, and that's going to take it every time. Sinclair took his share of the of the beating there, kind of caught the top of uh, or the crossbar with the top of his chin. So a rare four on three for right. an extended time here. 102 remaining in the coincidental minors to both Smith. And Wood. So a lot of open ice on the eye. Here comes French with one man back in James. Josh French trying to work around James. See, and that, that just shouldn't happen. That's a thing where Josh French, French just beat them to the puck, and that just can't happen. French along with Hookinson and Zmolik out to uh, at least start the penalty kill in this four on three. Rochick, Hickey. James with the shot and that one is blocked and then uh, fans are going to want to see a penalty against the Charger collided with Dryden McKay don't think we're going to see one however. No I don't think we are no hand went up. That was Jeffers. Calling, calling a, are they calling a hand pass here? They might be calling a hand pass and moving it outside the zone. Nope. Thought I saw a signal with the hand pass signal but apparently not. Again last night 0 for 1 with the man advantage we talked about also the fact that the uh, Charger power play lowest ranked in the country and they've also given up just they've scored nine power play goals but they've given up five shorties on the season and the Mavericks have scored five. So think of that they're plus four on the season on power play goals to shorthanded goals. I mean that's just an unheard of number. Jeffers James. That shot gets blocked. Connor Mackey will take it into the corner. Underneath the fallen player right now, and James, player still digging at it. Brought out as McNeely's working James over, played to the far side. 
Chargers are back at full strength as Smith is out, so it's a five on four power play for another 52 seconds. Jeffers will tee up a shot that's sent wide off the dasher. One of the Chargers tries to get to it. Mavericks will pick it up and sent down by McNeely, which will give them a chance to get a fresh unit out to uh, kill off the remainder of the penalty. Chargers already have more shots on goal tonight than they did in the first period last evening with 9.38 to go. They've got five shots on goal, so a little bit better. But on the scoreboard, they're down by a couple. Foley with the shot. That one gets blocked out in front by Zmolik. Still now to the near side of the net. Neudecker. Coyle. Vincent tries the shot. Lutz gets enough of that one to uh, block the shot. And it carries out of the uh, neutral ice area. Oh, Rivera steps in. Yeah. And hopefully he's okay. The irony is just yeah. as. The timing of that is just terrible. But it looks like he's okay. Rivera's laughing, I think. Face mask comes up. Yep. They it opened the door for Gerard to get out of the box just as Rivera was going to go with the hip check to get there in time. Thankfully, he looks to be okay in the Mavericks on top, two nothing in Mankato. Don Westfall, Dan McCarger back in downtown Mankato to close out the regular season, and you'll see the deposit that was self-inflicted by Rivera. Now, the timing of that is incredible. They're literally opening the door to let Charlie Gerard out just as he's getting ready to do a hip check and the door opens up and the wall is gone. You know, I know that yeah. Rob Murray's into uh, media and yeah. kind of making a name for himself, but that's no way to go about the process. No, it certainly is not. Rob Murray in the uh, box, uh, one of the off ice officials. Looks as well for the Mankato Free Press. And that, that was, I've never seen that one before. <laughs> no. I mean, it, it's nice that we can laugh about it because uh, it could have been very dangerous and very bad, but it turned out okay. Here comes Rivera. Let him go ahead and score a goal. Well, he's already got one in the contest. Well, let's get him another one. The Provnik with two last night. The faceoff circle down low. Here comes Toomey. Can he catch it up? No, because he was tied up by a couple defenders on the play. McNeely in the corner. Now in the Provnik. Down low for Toomey. Along the goal line, tried to get a shot off. It's to be played at the point, but held by McNeely. Mavericks are going to get things set up one more time with French. Now inside eight minutes left in the first. Connor Mackey with the wrister that hit Toomey. Mavericks will reset. French back from Connor Mackey. Down low, they were trying to find McNeely back door. French will chip it ahead for Toomey. Out in front in the Provnik, and that's a one time that one you heard the post, Dan. About a minute back, Parker Toomey went down to one knee and came back up and tried to get a shot off. And for kids who are watching at home, if you're DVRing it, go back and look at it. There's a drill that you work on all the time where you end up on Superman, but you skate down, you go down to a D, you come up, go down to a D, and come back up. Souter with Michaela score! These guys are something. Well, it was yeah. just a terrible play defensively yeah. at the line. The Chargers had an opportunity to clear, and they looked up, and that hesitation by the defenseman allowed Souter to pick him and find Michaelis all alone in front for the one time in a 3 nothing lead. We've talked about it so many times that if you don't get the clear, they're going to make you pay, and it happens right there. They jump on opportunities. You see the pull check there, the pass by Souter, and the finish out front for Michaelis. On senior night, the senior adds to his total. Souter already with two points on the evening, and the Mavericks are, uh, again, in control here. Barely half period is gone in the first. 18th of the season for Michaelis. Now 37 points. The key really is going to be for the Mavericks tonight. Can you continue this? They they continued the onslaught for 60 minutes last night. Can you do it again tonight? Because you now for all practices and purposes, the game is over. Jeremko, Charlie Gerard. 
Rotenberg tries to feed it ahead, picked up by Mackey. He'll just lift it to center ice. You're down at the point where it's what's the score going to be? Can the Chargers keep it a game or will this get to be a laugh like last night? And will the Mavericks keep their foot on the gas all evening long like they did last night? Because if they do, it could get to double digits again. Amit as it's chipped out. Smith. Drop pass there that wasn't great, but it's cleaned up by Amit. Dumped into the zone as Bond will turn one around. Mavericks have been able to get away with some mistakes because this team can't capitalize on them, but they're mistakes that you don't want to be making next weekend. They they jump up in, in level of competition just a bit next weekend up at Bemidji. Door sweeps one from trying to sweep it out in front from behind the net. Penalty coming up against the Mavericks. Lodigan near side. Liam Isaac and the Chargers gets clear out of the net for the extra attacker. Lonigan tries to get one past McNeely, unable to do so, and that'll bring about the whistle. And checking from behind call against Minnesota State. Mavericks three goals on 11 shots tonight. And Walker Dewar comes to the box. 39 points in his career, the junior. Make that 30 points in his career. Three goals, eight assists for 11 points this season. 519 left to go here in the first. Again, the 3 0 Maverick lead. And, uh, you know, it, it becomes difficult to even articulate some of these moments, but the essence is yeah. for the Chargers, if you have any shot at all, you, you're you going to have to score. score here to get yeah. some momentum and take right. that into the first intermission. And when you look at the numbers, statistically, the likelihood is not good that they're going to score on a power play. No. So they've only scored nine all year. I mean, it's almost as likely that they'd give up a shorthanded goal as that they would score a power play goal. As weird as that sounds, yeah, yeah you are correct. Near side, Noy Decker, drop pass. Coyle, now played in Finson. Coyle again as the Chargers get set up. That shot, nice kick save by Dryden McKay as that one might have been redirected out in front with some traffic. Cole, far side, Neudecker, Finson will tee up the shot. That one's wide. Connor Merkley will play it back. Coyle. Neudecker down low. And that one pops through the crease in midair, and it's picked up by Zmolik, and he'll fire it down. A couple decent looks anyway for the Chargers. Maybe a, not a little luck on the one, but Dryden McKay covering up the post so they couldn't pull it from the backside after a nice carom off the back wall. Liam Isaac. Jeffers will go behind the net still with puck possession. Connor James. Tanner Hickey. Isaac in the corner. James onto the far side. Played to an open corner by Rochick. James with the shot that's off the dash or hard, just wide of the net. And the Mavericks are going to carry it out and they'll just dump it down. Jeremko might have had a chance to feed Lutz, but they'd been on the ice a while and wanted to get some fresh skaters out for the remaining about 20 seconds at the time. We're now down to 10 remaining. So one last rush, maybe for the Chargers. Well, different situation, different game. Maybe a try that, but up 3 0, you don't take that chance at all. They're trying to feed James down low, but the Mavericks block that attempt and Doors out of the box. Mavericks back at full strength. If you're even in the scorebook, that's maybe a time where you go ahead and take a chance shorthanded there, but really not worth it. And the Mavericks kill off another penalty. Rochick will play it to the near side. Emmett will pick it up. He's able to play it out of the zone. Hickey's there, and he fires it right back in. Uh, at least four times tonight in the first period here that the Mavericks have had a stick chopped out of their hands and I don't remember a whole lot of slashing calls so far. Sinclair will just cover up before Souter can get there. We'll take that uh, break. Face off coming back in the offensive zone and the Mavericks with the three nothing lead. Thank 
Mavericks with a 3 nothing lead here late in the first period to play just got the announcement that, that with that goal by Michaelis he now is the division one goal scoring leader for the Mavericks he just broke a tie that he had with Shane Joseph now 69 goals at the division one level for Michaelis French is down low has one slip off his stick Hookinson with the shot that's wide and Provnik will track down the rebound in the corner. Toomey out in front trying to find a way to get one onto the stick of French. Molik. Josh French. Molik will tee up a shot. Oh, that one was redirected by Toomey just wide. Sinclair looked behind to make sure that hadn't gone in. It was really close. Hukinson with the shot that Naprovnik thought about uh, taking a look at on the tip. Hukinson able to get there before it's swatted down by Jeffers, and that'll be an icing call against Alabama Huntsville. A little bit of pinball action there for a minute where shots were just going all over the place like it was coming off the bumpers really fast. 11 to 8 shots on goal, so much better period shot wise for the Chargers, but nothing in the net so far. And score 3 nothing exactly where they were last night late in the first period. Gervais and Merkley were in the zone. Actually, a Gerard, sorry, and Gerard gets tossed on that one. Still getting used to seeing him in the center position. It's different. Yeah. As you mentioned earlier, they had a good week, uh, a night last night. We weren't able to play that out into the slot area. The fans reacting as Rivera and uh, one of the I think that was Bailey Newton again is there's a chance for the Mavericks. They were kind of tangled up here along the near dasher. Merkley takes a hit from Doerr. Yeah he, he felt that one. Rivera McNeely. So we're down to 120 remaining in the first. Rivera dumps it in behind the net. Smith is there for the Mavericks. Shide will tee up a high shot that's into the corner. Bouncing puck in the slot that's picked up. Liam Isaac poked away from him. Lutz left off for Jeremko there into the zone. Jeremko on his backhand, fights it off, puts one just wide. Now Lutz steps in for the Mavericks. He spins one around. Scoats on the line. Score! It looked like, yeah, it took a while to dribble across, across the line, but it finally did, and the Mavericks have a 4 0 lead. I saw the light. I was waiting for the official to make an indication. I think it was kind of sliding across the goal line. I don't know. Finally, when it finally did go in. We'll take a look at it. Yeah, they're going to want to look at it right away, Dan. I would say there's no question that it ends up finally going in. The light might have come on prematurely, but it's in. Yeah, you either way up, it's in, see. so I'm yeah, wondering right. what the review might I don't be know. about. I don't know because uh, it's it's clearly in. Uh, it the light might have come on prematurely, but uh, it ends up going behind the goal line, no question. If we get the overhead shot, you'll be able to see it's clearly in. If it's uh, credited to Lutz, that'll be his 11th of the season. But again, yeah, from our standpoint, this looks good all the yeah, way. Here, here's here's the look you want to see. That's, I mean, that's a, that's a goal. Now, are that's, they going to say Jeremko came and dislodged the net a little bit? I don't think it certainly went under. I mean, that net no. was, it I, moved, but it had right. not that lifted had, off no. the post or no. anything. No, I don't think that, no. This shouldn't take very long at all. If it takes long, then that might be what they're looking at, but I don't think this should take long at all. This is a good goal. Yeah, Jeremko is tied up by Finson on the play. Right, and he's... Coming around short side. But we think it's good. Yeah. Yeah. So I, boy, if it's not, yeah, let's go. 46.6 seconds left to go in the first. Well, this is taking them longer than I would have guessed. Now their headset's coming off. This should be a good goal and 4 0 Mavericks. This was a gathering up their possessions. 
They hit the ice and they call it a goal. Yeah, but that's a good call on right. from our perspective. Yeah. I don't have a problem with taking a look at it, but if they would have overturned that goal, that would have been a travesty. This the puck clearly broke the or you know when the, the net got bumped oh, uh, here, but certainly had nothing to do with the goal going in. 19-13, the goal by Lutz. And it dribbled across the goal line slowly, and the light might have come on before it had actually gone over the goal line, but there was never a problem with the net. Mike Corbett, of course, going to put up any argument that he can, and I, I don't blame him, but it's 4 nothing. Uh, he's clearly not happy. He's pleading his yeah. case, and, yeah. you know, Three nothing, four nothing. The real—I right. mean, it's just—it's potentially already a hole. It's too big for the Chargers right. to climb out of tonight, yeah. even at three nothing. But Corbett's trying to get, and it might be as much for his—you know—showing his team that he's fighting yeah. for his team. Exactly. Um, that he actually believes it's a goal or not, because we've heard coaches say that before. That um, they'll put up, you know, a big argument just so they show their players that they're still fighting for him, even though it's not going their way. Scheid and Jeremko scoring. And we're going to get a stoppage as one of the Chargers got Dumperacic back in between the penalty boxes and they're going to take Smith off. His second of the period. That will not make Mike Houston's no, happy. He's going to make note of that one. They're going to say boarding call. Yep. Smith is gone 1929. If you noticed or not, but Smith does not believe he committed the infraction. I think we're happy that it's two minutes is all. So the Chargers on their third power play. Here's a chance now for the Mavericks. French and Rivera shorthanded. French, Rivera. Oh, it got underneath somehow. I lost the puck, but it must have been trapped under Sinclair and then came out. Boy, you might want to look at this one to make sure it didn't go in. It's a dangerous play for yeah, the clearly. Mavericks coming into the zone with two of the better penalty killers. Coming in two on one shorthanded. How many times have we seen that pair combine on yeah. a play like that over the years? Well, they're not going to look at it, but I'd, I'd like to get a good look at this. Here we get a look at the rebound or the replay real quick. Oh, it just came off the top. Off the, top, off the top of the shoulder of the goaltender, off the pipe, but either way, it did not go in. Bolio, Vincent, Coyle in the corner. Let's see if the Chargers can get one last rush up the ice before the period ends. Neudecker will carry it in with five seconds left. Neudecker back on top. Coyle's shot is blocked. Rivera will tap it down the ice, and we are at the end of the first period of play. Mavericks continuing their dominance from last night with four more goals here in the period. Souter his sixth, Rivera his seventh, Michaelis his 18th, and Lutz his 11th. And that's where things stand. Again, first period is in the books in Mankato, and our score after one, Minnesota State four, Alabama Huntsville nothing. We'll take a break, and when we come back, here from one of the Mavericks to kick off things in our first intermission on a Saturday night of hockey and a Maverick hockey weekend. Welcome back to downtown Mankato where the score is now 4 nothing. Your Minnesota State Mavericks are leading the Chargers of Alabama Huntsville. I'm Marissa Voss and I'm joined by senior forward captain number 23, Nick Rivera. Nick, in last night's game you guys didn't score until five minutes left in the first. Tonight's game you score in the first four minutes of play. What did you guys learn from last night and take to tonight and execute better? You know, we learned uh, Sinclair's a really good goaltender. He, uh, we put up almost 70 on him last night and you know, uh, anytime you're facing that many shots you gotta get tired somehow. So. Our motto is get pucks on net as soon as possible, and we were fortunate enough to get some bounces early on. You got the second goal of the night. How does it feel to sink one in the back of the net on with your family in attendance? Yeah, you know, uh, it can't, nothing can be possible without them, and you know, I'm beyond grateful for them to be here in a surreal moment. Uh, I mean, they're, they're just amazing, so it was a great feeling all around. It was a great play by Carol and uh, Dewar, so credit to them also, but it was, a, it was an unbelievable feeling. Thanks, Nick. Good luck in the second. Thank you. Coming back from break, there's going to be senior mania. There's going to be some senior videos that are going out, and they're out on MSU's YouTube. 
on all social media platforms. So watch those and stay tuned, guys. The Chargers of Alabama Huntsville, Dan McCarger on the first intermission. Don Westfall joining us very shortly. We've got a lot of highlights to get to here as we get going with uh, four goals, one power play and three even strength. It'll begin with Lucas Souter on the power play from Ian Scheib and Charlie Girard at 405, one nothing Mavericks. Nick Rivera goes short side from Andy Carroll and Walker Dewar at 707 to make it two nothing Mavericks. At 1247, Mark Michaelis gets his first of the night from Lucas Souter at 1247, his 18th of the season, and it's three nothing Mavericks. And then Reggie Lutz, even strength from Jake Jaremko and Ian Scheid at 19-13. Four nothing Mavericks after one period of play. See the shots on goal there. Those shots of goal should read 15 to 8 in favor of the Mavericks. Attempted are 15-8. And uh, let's go to penalty minutes. 8-4 uh, and faceoffs 1, 11-8 in favor of the Mavericks. Out of town scores, Ferris and Bowling Green tied at one in the second. Bemidji and Alaska coming up. Minnesota leading Penn State 2-1 in the second period of play. They uh, had a tie last night. Northern Michigan over Lake Superior 2-0 in the first. St. Cloud 1-0 over St. Uh, North Dakota in the second. And UMD and Western Michigan tied at one in the second down. WCHA standings going into tonight. The Mavericks with a five-point lead. Not a bad spot to be in this deep into the season, obviously. And as you mentioned earlier, we will not know if the Mavericks would win the McNaughton Cup tonight. They could before uh, everyone would go to bed. There will the be evening. a few Maverick fans yes. staying up late tonight. I promise you that much. Flow Hockey TV will be busy as far as Maverick viewership and what's going on up between the Beavers and the Seawolves. Maverick. But next weekend, it's going to be an important weekend for both clubs. No doubt about that, especially, you know, for obviously not only fighting for the McNaughton Cup and the regular season championship and the top seed, but uh, at that point, Bemidji probably still will be in a position. Yes. There will be one of those bubble teams as far as the uh, pairwise rankings in the national tournament go. Yeah, they're most likely going to need a victory or two next weekend to improve their chances to make the NCAA tournament. Now they'll have some, a chance during the playoffs as well, but... Uh, I'm sure they're still thinking outside looking in that they've got a chance to win the regular season title and that's their first thought. So the Mavericks again killing off a penalty here. Their third one of the game as far as the penalty kill that they are on with Smith in the box for about another minute and 15 seconds. The remaining time left on that boarding call. French in the zone gets knocked off the puck on the play but it's still laying there for Carl to pick up and again this is a power play for Huntsville. It's a really bad giveaway in their offensive zone and Josh French almost made him pay for it but then he took a pretty good hit. And Merkley on the far side Neudecker to the point. Finson. That one gets blocked out front by Souter. Finson again onto the near side Neudecker lets it go. Back to the point Finson far side coil. Merkley. Bolio. Maverick's pretty content just letting them spin it around the perimeter in the zone up on top. And that shot gets blocked, and Souter easily will knock that down the ice. We talk about it all the time, Don. Three tape to tape passes will get you an open look. And they're just not able to do that right now. They're very young and a lot of inexperienced sophomores and freshmen. and. They're not able to make the passes regularly that will get you that open look. McNeely sends it down and Smith is ready to get back on the ice. Mavericks back at full strength with the 4-0 lead here early in the second. Drop pass there and a shot to Dryden McKay. That's the first shot he saw. Didn't see a shot in the power play, but uh, it's his first save of the period. Get you back into the work a little bit, but not a you know a highly contested shot. But those are the ones the goalies like. They get to see it and they've got the angle and they're able to wrap their body around it. Nine shots on goal already for the Chargers after last evening where they got 11 total. So yeah, better, better that way, but the Mavericks have taken three penalties early on. You look at the, uh, the statistics after a one plus period here and they don't necessarily see as wide in disparity as they were last night, yet the Mavericks have a 4 nothing lead already. To me ahead, here comes Dubrovnik with French breaking down Dubrovnik. Nice job there defensively as James goes to the ice to break up that play. Dubrovnik behind the net. 
out in front trying to feed McNeely but it's broken up by Wood and sent out of the zone. Yeah really good play by Connor James the defender senior out of Alberta Wainwright of Alberta to stop that two on one. Ison will be the call here so we'll take the face off back into the Maverick zone as Dan mentioned the uh, Mavericks next weekend probably will be uh, going after the McNaughton Cup as they close out the regular season at Bemidji State. Games Friday and Saturday up in Bemidji for those of you interested in making the trip north. And then we're back on the air with the first round of the WCHA playoffs two weeks from now. I believe March 6 is the Friday night game and of course the first two rounds with another icing call here. First two rounds are best two of three and whoever survives that at the highest seed will host a one game winner take all championship on March 21st. And you know me I love those Sunday night games. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of them. The excitement level though for teams when they're battling to make the NCAA tournament knowing that uh, they have to win that game or they're out. Their season is over now when you're the home team and you're the Mavericks where you're already guaranteed to be in the tournament. It's not nearly as exciting. You, you want to win the conference tournament obviously but whether they win the conference tournament or not they will be playing in the NCAA tournament. So but there's been years where you have to win that Sunday night game to advance to continue your season. That's pretty exciting when it's both teams doing it. Rivera is with a shot that's off the leg out to center ice and the Mavericks quickly clean that up. With possession it's played ahead for Dewar. Dallas Gerads carries into the zone. Gerads stood up by Hickey on the play. Danchenko loses the puck. Here comes Rivera. Low shot there but it was blocked by Hickey. Dallas Gerads. Dredd still with it near side out in front there's a one time attempt by Souter Dallas Dredd's digging at it still loose in the zone the Mavericks hold with Zmoli because the Mavericks are in the midst of trying to complete a change the puck nowhere no one has any idea where it went it is it stuck in a skate yeah no it's stuck underneath the breezers yeah. of uh, one of the players and as everybody started to move it drops out and we'll get a face off in the zone like to skate to the other end and just shake your breezer in the goal. Four nothing Mavericks on a Saturday night after winning 10 nothing last night. 14 goal weekends pretty good and there's still a lot of hockey left to be played. Souter unable to get to the race to the puck. Neudecker will dig things up and a turnover here come the Mavericks again. Charlie Girard. That one is in on net as the shot was taken with Souter out in front looking for a tip but Sinclair makes that save. Sinclair on the season has an 898 save percentage after last night and a 3.72 goals against 219 and 6 on the year. He's got eight wins in 58 starts in his college career. But uh, as you can see uh, he gets a lot of work. Does not have a whole lot of help in front of him. But I think Mike Corbett likes the young guys that he's got and thinks that there is a future here. Zmolik will come back to win that race along with Jeffers after the puck. Michaelis. Rink wide on the near side. Gerard dumps it into the zone. Neudecker on the far side tips it out and Jeffers will carry. That shot from Neudecker gets blocked to the near corner. Out in front, there's a good look. That was Merck who had the opportunity, and McKay makes the save. Newton at the point, tipped wide of the net. Souter will pick things up. Gerard. Chargers back to work one more time with. Austin Bolio now Coyle with the shot rebound given up by McKay and he makes second save as well. A little bit of a spark here for the Chargers. Well, it's kind of nice to see just a little bit of pushback. Smith. Jeremko Smith one more time out in front trying to feed Lutz but that fails to connect. You can see what they were looking there for. It just yep. didn't it didn't uh, match up at all but Lutz was there for a pass and it just Unable to make it complete all the way. Still in the zone at the line. Hickey has it. Stood up by Jeremko. Rottengen stood up there by Scheid. Smith has it. And now the Mavericks will attempt to 
hold puck possession. Gain some control as it's still in the zone. Jeremko. That was Liam Isaac on him. Shied. Amit. Emmett ahead for Lutz. Lutz Ooh. took a heavy hit from behind, and wow. the officials are going to call that one. Yeah. And Lutz is yeah, down as that was Hickey. Yeah, this uh, this could be interesting. Lutz is still down, not moving a whole lot, as that was right in front of the bench. And Hickey's going to go. We'll take a see if we can take a, another look or two at this hit against Lutz. Boy, I mean. It's it's from behind, no question about it. It's a back check from behind. I don't know that that should matter one way or the other, but he, he's clearly hits him square from behind. Now he's away from the wall. A lot of times when they're away from the wall, it's even more dangerous. There's more, you know, chance of hitting the head into the wall and stuff. But I, I don't know. Don, we've seen we've seen calls like this this particular play go both ways, and I, I don't know what to think. If it were me, I would call it a five-minute major because it's just so dangerous. But I don't know what they'll do. Official in there very quickly to uh, make sure one to protect Hickey, but to make sure things don't escalate. Yeah, Lutz is already coming back out. Right. I mean, you can see it right in front of you. I mean, he hits them square in the back from behind. And he goes face first into the wall. Let's put it this way. It's the type of stuff that they're trying yes. to clean up. No question. They would like to get this out of couch. They'd like to get it out of every level of hockey. I don't know what they'll do in this situation, though. They have not opened the gate yet. No. I don't see the they're, uh, they're gentleman. Doing the, the one referee said he turned to the side a little bit, so I. It's going to be two minutes. Saying that he he turned aside either to avoid it or he was trying to come from the other side, but I don't think Mike Hastings is going to be very happy with this. One more look from a wider angle. They just showing know. it here in the yeah. arena for yeah. the first time, but only two minutes up on yeah. the board. No, I mean, the, the best thing about that play is that he's okay. Yes, indeed. Reggie Lutz is okay. But if you want to get rid of it, you got to call that all the time. And until we get to the point where we call those every time when it's a check from behind um, and not say, well, that was kind of from the side, you're not going to get rid of it. Souter, he has the power play goal. The Mavericks one for one back in the first with the man advantage. Six player scrum in the corner. Chargers trying to just keep it in there to take more time off the clock. Fishel's telling the play on. Bouncing puck that the Chargers do get. Pretty effective there, taking a good 15, 20 seconds off, and it's sent down the ice. Shide. Plays ahead for Souter who taps it in. Folio is back over to the far side at the line. Shy didn't able to hold the zone. See, to me, you could have called interference on Finson on the entry. Puck was gone into the corner, and he clearly held up the Maverick player. But they hate to give teams a two-player advantage, so you'd never see that call made. Near boards, Gerard Lutz is out there along with Naprovnik in the corner. Mavericks still really haven't had puck possession here for a majority of this power play opportunity. It's been a very effective kill, no question, for the Chargers. Lutz, quick shot there's the rebound given up. Sinclair unable to cover up on the play. Now it'll just kind of trickle off into the corner. James, Naprovnik, Connor Mackey. Jeremko and the Mavericks really for the first time getting set up and then Jeremko thinks about a pass or a shot and as he kind of lost eyesight of the puck it comes off. Mavericks not even a shot on goal really during no. that two minute situation and then still a four nothing lead for the Mavericks dumped in Dallas Gerads. 
I think under the circumstances, we'll give the Mavericks a break on that, though, because they've been awfully good all weekend long on everything they've done. So sooner or later, things aren't going to go your way. It's Molik. Mavericks on the four check. That'll be picked up along the boards, cleared, but the Mavericks are there to cover up right away, and Hookinson quickly ahead for Rivera. Salerno plays it off into the zone. Neil Ladigan has his shot blocked by Zmolik. Rivera, rink wide on the near side, Dewar. Dewar spins away from the check. Down low, and they had, that was Rivera looking for a second, but this temp goes wide. Now Dallas Gerads dumped into the corner for Napravnik. McNeely also along the boards holding for Minnesota State. There have been a lot of stuff along the wall over the last few minutes where you can't really see a whole lot of what's going on. The puck just being frozen. And that's the one thing the Chargers said they want to do was make it more of a half court uh, game. Using Mike Corbett's words and just not let the Mavericks run. Do everything you can to not let them run. Rotenberg as it punched away from him. Bond will dump it into the zone. Bolio, McNeely for the Mavericks. Napravnik is able to get it out of the zone. Hickey is back, dumps it back in, and McNeely will pick things up for the Mavericks. Down to 10 and a half remaining in the second. No score in the second period of play after the Mavericks open up a 4 0 lead after one. French and Napravnik. <laughs> French stole it away. Napravnik was going to shoot, and French got there first. On the far side, Peyton Francis will tip it out of the zone. Sent in off the stick of Toomey. Sinclair plays it ahead for Finson. Rochik. Pretty long sustained time without a whistle here. Souter. He and Hickey in the corner. Now Charlie Girard. Out in front, there's a one-timer score! Souders shot, rebounds right down on top of the crease. Michaelis did not make a mistake, and it's 5-0. Yeah, he cleaned up the garbage right out in front. It just lay in there. Michaelis knows what to do with that, as we've seen so many times. Mark Michaelis with the finish, and the Mavericks lead 5-0. Michaelis, his second tonight, 19, number 70 in his career. He just say welcome back. Yes, uh, if there is any doubt what his return would be like yeah. after missing seven games, I think he's 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 fine. He took care took care of all those questions. He was a little rusty last night. Three points. Three points. <laughs> Had a couple shots where I think he, he thought he could score, and he's got hit, two goals tonight. Hit the pipe once. Yeah. Yeah. Ten oh nine. The time to go for Michaelis. I say his rusty is uh, is pretty good compared to other people's really good. We'll take a break. Michaela's second goal of the game makes it a 5 0 Maverick lead. Looking at Bowling Green, or Bowling Green, Bemidji State and Minnesota State, separated by five points. Split earlier here in Mankato and down next weekend, it's kind of big. Well, it's all the marbles, and I think if you're a Maverick fan, obviously yeah. you'd like to close it up this weekend, but uh, good for the conference as far as uh, taking it all the way into the last weekend to play. And Bemidji State, Minnesota State, the two best teams in the country since the beginning of the year. Right. Coming into the weekend, they were both 10-1-1 and one for a winning percentage of 87.5%. Uh, uh, so and a running rough shot over this conference, and their one loss is downward to each other. Shied. Score! Wow. Did that deflect in off of somebody, or did that just go straight? Hard to tell. Hard to tell. Jeremko is out in front. Don't know if he'll get credit for it or shied, but the Mavericks have now opened up a 6 nothing lead, and it's starting to look more and more yeah. like it did last night. Yeah. I would have never imagined it even a night ago, no. but he'll take a look at it from the angle here we have, Dan. I'm not sure if Jeremko got it or not. I don't know if it goes off a skate or if that's a straight shot through. We'll find out in a second here when they make the announcement. Either way, it's 6 nothing Mavericks, and the route is officially on. Indeed, yeah. We'll wait for the official announcement from the public address announcer. 
They're going to give it to Jeremko, his seventh of the season. So Shai picks up the assist. And uh, also Nathan Smith on an assist. So you can't tell if it goes off a skate of Jeremko or off his stick. Our monitor not big enough to know for sure. We get it. Maybe we'll get a little better look at it. Either way, Jeremko with the goal. Played back for Hookinson, but a little bit too wide, so he'll have to come back on the play. Neudecker forces it behind the net. Berkeley knocked off, and it's actually covered up pretty quickly by Dryden McKay. He just wants to get involved yeah. in the action. Haven't been a whole lot of 16 goal weekends for the Mavericks. And there's still a lot of time. I mean, there's 29 minutes left of this game. Well, we mentioned at the top of the broadcast the uh, 10 goals scored last night, the most by the Mavericks in over 20 years in a game. And what's what's the weekend, the uh, top <laughs> weekend scoring? I, I will have to defer over to the other side of the we'll, arena to the we'll statistics. Go ahead and ask that right now. Yeah. Door. Trying to chip one out and does gets it past Rotenberg. Salerno for Hickey. Danchenko dumps it into the zone, but Smolik is there to turn things around. Here's a chance now for the Chargers, but it's played behind Lottengen on that pass from Salerno. Played down low, and Kay has to make that save. Fire that over to PA, see if he can pull that one up. Making them work this weekend, Dan. All right. Paul Allen, the sports information head here at Minnesota State, man. Oh, as McNeely drops there on the play. Mavericks will just be content to get some get a new line new out skaters here. on. Yeah, and obviously no urgency. And Dan, it's yeah. You wonder at what point the Mavericks. Uh, that was a question, kind of Coach Hastings had last night. Is at what point? You know, just human nature just kind of take over and the intensity is not there. We didn't see it last night. No, really, not for at the all. most part, they just kind of continue a very dominating effort. They've probably taken a few more penalties tonight than Mike Hastings would uh, would have liked, but otherwise they've kept the pressure up really good all evening long. And there's still a lot of hockey left to play. You beat somebody six nothing, that's dominating them. And there's still a half a hockey game left basically, so. What you don't want to do is just get sloppy and uh, unless the Chargers just decide to skate this game out, which we've seen before where things kind of slow down. Toomey trying to hold the zone, poked away as the Chargers are bringing it in, so they will regroup with Teddy Rotenberg who dumps it in. They almost got caught with too many men on the ice. Carroll is back from Minnesota State. And again, the Mavericks uh, extremely deliberate as far as getting some new skaters on the ice. Carroll dumped into the zone. Here comes Connor Wood with the shot that's armed out. Souter. Carroll will catch up to it. He's able to chip it out of the zone. Then the Provnik swats it down. What you want to do here for the next 26 minutes, Don, is stay out of the box and stay healthy. And to stay healthy, that you can't let up. You got to skate full speed because if you're going half-hearted, that's a time where you get your head down and you get hurt somewhere along the way. So, Michaelis and Rotenberg in the corner. Charlie Gerard in there trying to dig it out and does. Now it's caught up in the skates of the official who takes a hit or two. But the clock continues to tick. Loose puck. Here comes Michaelis up on top. Shide. That one is sent just wide. Merkley comes back. Shide gets there first. Merkley how has it in the corner. Chargers in the zone. Forcing the puck along the boards. Usually we've seen that on the defensive side, but the Mavericks will dig things out with Shide. This is the third time yeah. now the Mavericks have been able to stand behind the net and just kill time and get a line change. 
There is uh, obviously no pressure being applied by the charges in that situation. Lottingen with the sign or the shot there. It's back now to the point. That one gets caught up in some traffic in the near corner. Lutz. Penalty is going to be coming up against the Mavericks. Holding call. Looks like Shide's going to go. Yep, Ian Shide coming to the box for a hold. Is holding Daniel Lottigan. So again, this about the only thing that you can look at the Mavericks tonight and say, you know, probably could have been better is taking penalties. Well, Coach Hastings talked about that sense of discipline and not getting caught up in that stuff. Uh, is one of our keys tonight. Mavericks on their fourth penalty kill. Off the draw and then French is going to get dropped. No call. In the zone. Hookinson trying to force it out but it goes behind the net. Merkley stood up by Zmolik. Bolio all the way along the boards. French picks it up. Here comes Rivera. Rivera with the shot that's kicked out. And that one actually goes up into that. We saw him scoring a similar shot yeah. a couple weeks ago against. You only get one Michigan. of those in your career. Okay. You yeah. only get one like that. Can't be greedy? No. Well, you can be greedy, but uh, you can't be that lucky to get a snap off a wrist shot from the blue line to beat the goaltender from that far away. Mavericks will get the benefit of the face off on the penalty kill in their offensive zone with 129 remaining as you can see on the power play. This is dominant a weekend as the Mavericks have had in quite a while. Now obviously the opponent is the opponent that has something to do with it but the Mavericks really showed up this weekend. Hickey played ahead. Dumped in by Ben Danchenko. McNeely for Jeremko. Out the center ice. They passed a couple of chargers all the way into the zone where McNeely has it. We'll very deliberately play it over to Connor Mackey. He was ahead for French. French ahead now for Jeremko in the zone, but he has it poked away by Hickey. James with 50 seconds left to go in the power play tipped to the far side and Jeremko will send it down the ice. Shots are 26 13 a much more normal sounding number than last night. I mean it got kind of absurd last evening. Fired into the zone by James. The Mavericks again shorthanded. Then the Provnik just uh, elects to play it back into his own defensive zone to take more time off the clock, and Hukinson sends it down the ice. The Chargers hurry; they can get one more rush up here. Bolio left off from Merkley. Far side. Finson is shy. Is out of the box. Mavericks back at full strength. Trying to feed one into the slot area for Neudecker, but it misses, and the Mavericks will bring it back the other way. Souter, Napravnik on his backhand, and Sinclair will make that save. And with 250 left to go in the second, Mavericks in control here on a Maverick Hockey Weekend. Dryden McKay looking to improve upon those numbers, not only uh, his career numbers, but season numbers as well. There you take a look at his career stats in less than two years. 61 games, 13 shutouts. I mean, tonight. That's, about 20, that's darn near 25% of his games. I mean. It's not, but it's it's pretty close to 25% of his game. Probably 22 and a half percent, something like that. You didn't want to say anything about tonight. No, not yet. You'd like to. <laughs> I, I, I would feel no hesitation. Oh, at this point, I mean, yeah. that's really no offense. It's yeah. about all that's left to be determined. Exactly. Wood. Behind the net, Murphy up on top. That shot gets blocked out in front by 
Michaelis and the Mavericks will bring it into the zone with numbers. Toomey between the circle to the far side. Rebound is down on the ice as it was poked at by Zmolik. And then that was Michaelis on the ice as well, trying to reach out for it. Danchenko. Mavericks turned a two on one into a four on two pretty darn quickly. Toomey's back to work again. Dewar tees one up that he fans on. The follow up by Toomey goes wide. Lukinson blocks that attempt to uh, get it down the ice, and Mavericks back at work on the four check. Dewar was trying the old trick that you used to use in foosball where you wind up and barely hit it and it goes in. Hookinson, long lead pass ahead for Dewar. Connor James. Rivera holds the boards, keep it in the zone. Rivera with the shot, score! Oh. Those are just killers. Well, that one was yeah. out of nowhere. Yeah, Sinclair is just like frustrated. You can tell he's frustrated after that one. Nick Rivera, his second goal of the night. Mavericks now 7 nothing. Didn't get a hat trick last night. Maybe it'll happen tonight. There's a lot of time left, but see it here. So he just, just looks done. Yeah, just kind of an innocent shot there. 1845 is the time of that goal. Rivera's got two tonight, eight in the season. James is behind his own net. Rads with own assist on the play as he was able to work the boards on the turnover. Doer trying to work through Francis, but it'll be turned around, and here comes James back the other way. James, a couple of players get around and then try <laughs> McKay with just a little glove lay there. Makes it look so easy, yeah, Dan. He had that all the way. Wow. He had a player coming in at about 100 miles an hour. If you snatched it out of the air like it was nothing. In all honesty, have you ever seen, and I'm not saying this negatively, yeah. but the first word that comes to mind is just, it's almost nonchalant. Yeah. He just doesn't show really any emotion, yeah. doesn't get, you know, too wound up about the whole thing. Even when he lets a goal in, you know, he's not sitting there ranting and not, you know, skating off into the corner and right. shaking his head. He's just very confident. Most of the time he gives up a goal. It's been so long since they did it. He's kind of surprised that it happened. That was a nice save. Yeah, that was a big time save. Jeffers. I mean, not in, in the, you know, the game. The game is over. It's yeah. seven nothing. But you got a guy coming in full speed on you, and you snap it out of the air like it's like it's just nothing. Penalty coming up on the Chargers. Smith played to the far side. Finson will touch it, and we'll have a penalty called with about six seconds left to go here in the second. And uh, boy, the intensity in the building yeah. is just, yeah. it's very relaxed all the way yeah. around, Dan. And uh, you wonder if the third period is going to be a one where both teams just kind of skated out and not a whole lot of whistles and uh, not a whole lot of energy. For Mike Hastings, I don't know that he would want that to happen, but we've seen it before where both teams go about three quarter speed for the final period of the game when it's well decided what's going to happen. So it's going to be a high sticking call on Neudecker. So the Mavericks. High school, of course, the third period would be running time, but that's not the case in college hockey. Draw, here comes Molik with the shot. That oh. one's off the post. <laughs> Quickly turned around, played behind the net, and Sinclair, don't know if he'll come back for the third period to play or not. He was taken out after two periods last night. I don't know if it'll be his choice or not, but I don't know if he really wants to after this Ooh. first two periods tonight. It's been a rough night for him and for his team and for the entire weekend. It's been pretty, pretty tough. Mavericks continuing their dominance from last night. Four in the first, three more here in the second. Mikhail is his second of the night. Rivera's second of the night on either side of a goal by Jeremko. And after two periods of play, it is the Mavericks seven and the Chargers nothing. We'll take a break and come back with our second intermission here on a Maverick Hockey Weekend and Flow Hockey TV.
Welcome back to downtown Mankato, where the score is now 7-0. Your Minnesota State Mavericks are leading the Chargers of Alabama Huntsville. I'm Marissa Voss. I'm joined by junior forward number 16, Reggie Lutz. Reggie, it's been incredibly physical since puck dropped. You can test that in the last period with that big hit. What's the conversation been like on the bench? Uh, it's a second door game. They're trying to get a little chippy and play mid or in between the whistles on the right way. So yeah, we just got to take to our game and play our game and not get caught up in all that stuff. You guys have been absolutely dominating out there and going on your way to another double-digit night. What's been clicking for this Mav team so far? I think just uh, moving the offensive zone, uh, having possession of the puck, not, uh, not giving it up, just staying over the puck in the offensive zone. Thanks, Reggie. Good luck in the third. Thank you. Coming back from break, we're going to have you some more senior videos because it's Senior Mania here. So let's stay tuned to those, and they are available on MSU's YouTube channel. Thanks, guys. Don Westfall and Dan McCarger back in downtown Mankato, the Mayo Clinic Health System Event Center. We are enjoying the last of the seven senior spotlights. Those are all available on the uh, Maverick Hockey YouTube page, so we would encourage you to check those out. Uh, most of them right around the two minute mark and a, a good look at uh, a talented bunch of guys who've made a huge impression on Maverick Hockey here in the community. And as you've mentioned, Dan, the work yet to be done. We'll see how that transpires as we move into the playoffs next month as we take a look at our two period summary, Dan. Shots on goal, 23-12. The attempted shots are much more normal tonight than last night. See the block shots there. Mavericks one for three on the power play. Huntsville 0 for 4. Penalty minutes are pretty even, and the faceoffs won actually in favor of the Chargers now 14 13. Bowling Green leads Ferris State in the third period 2 0, 2 1. The Midge State and Alaska Anchorage coming up. Gophers blew a 2 1 lead. Penn State scored two goals 30 seconds apart to win that one 3 2. Northern Michigan is leading Superior in the second 2 0. North Dakota and St. Cloud tied at 1 in the third. And UMD and Western Michigan tied at 1 in the third period of play. Conference standings down as they are. You look at them going into tonight and next weekend. It's very, very tight. You know, we've talked a lot about where the Mavericks are at this point. As we look at teams like seven and eight, obviously you see right now it looks like Anchorage will be the team here to open the playoffs. Fair State still with the shot to sneak in there, but a big gap between seven and eight between Lake Superior State and Anchorage. So Mavericks, if they win, obviously they take on the number eight seed, and if they uh, end up somehow. Uh, unfulfilling that goal of getting the WCHA yeah. regular season championship and falling to number two of that. It looks like probably Lake Superior State would be the opponent in a couple weeks. Pairwise rankings, Dan, and well, Mavericks in a really good spot. Mavericks are in, in great position going into the weekend, and there's still so much to happen with the, the pairwise with the, the conference tournaments coming up and stuff, but Mavericks in a great position to get a top seat, and that's what you're really looking for is to get one of those top four spots. Doesn't really matter one, two, three, four. You just want to be a number one seed. Yep, and just off that list, I believe, coming into the weekend. Don't know after last night's play, but coming into the weekend, Bemidji State was at number 12, which, you know, uh, is considered right on that bubble, Dan, given the fact that uh, teams that win their conference tournament get the automatic bid. You get a couple upsets in there, and quickly those spots uh, can can fall off the list. Right. And then you're on the outside looking in. The Mavericks, we've been there a few times in recent years. Well, and as you go back to two years ago when UMD won the national title, they got in by one one thousandth of a point over the University of Minnesota. They were the last team in by one one thousandth of a point, and they won the national title. So that's how close it can get. They needed on the final day eight games to go their way, and all eight went their way on the final day, which is just incredible math. We found out Canisius, the Mavericks scored 17 against Canisius in 98-99, 19 versus Air Force in 97-98, but 26 against St. Scholastica the 90-91 season for the most goals ever scored in a weekend for Maverick Hockey. You know, credit to Paul Allen on that yeah. one because he had to do some math. I don't think that's a statistic they would normally keep. But again, Mavericks right now, 17 goals on the season. So it gives you an idea. They are uh, in some rarefied air as far as the offense we have witnessed over five periods of hockey. No question about it. So three goals tonight for the Mavericks would get them to a Division I record for the Mavericks on goals on a weekend. Played out of the zone again. The Mavericks starting the period here on a power play for about another Minute 15 seconds as Noydecker went to the box late in the second and a high sticking call. Mavericks at this point one for two on the man advantage. Michaelis flipped into the zone. There's a follow up and that's off the base of the net as it was not played well and indeed there has been a goalie change Dan. Yep Charlie Gerard just missed there but uh, we see uh, David Fessenden in the net again tonight. 
He's six foot six, 230 pounds, a freshman out of Parker, Colorado. I've actually been to Parker, Colorado. Have you now? It's actually a pretty nice community, South Side Metro of Denver. Yeah. So if you're on your way out of town, going to Colorado Springs, check out the Tigers. You'll go past Parker. Apparently, they grow them rather big there. <laughs> Here comes the charge, shorthanded onto the uh, stick of wood as it got knocked. Off a, uh, by a couple players here, and the Mavericks will go back to work as Michaelis has it in the zone. Mavericks again out of power play down behind the net. Gerard. Still 10 seconds left to go on the power play, and it's sent down the ice. I got a text message uh, during the break asking what I meant when I said that um, they might skate it out. Uh, and a lot of times when you have games and weekends that have got out of hand, it seems as though both teams, there's no agreement or anything, but they kind of finish off the period three on three and nobody hits anybody too much and you just try to get to the end of the game as quickly as possible. Loose puck that the Mavericks will play. Naprovnik. Allen will drive it in. And Chenko. Usually you don't see a whole lot of whistles or anything in the third period when it's uh, when it's a game like that where they both just say you know this is this is over and you don't do anything I won't do anything. Shide. Connor Mackey. The Provnik loses an edge as he brought it into the zone and the Mavericks will retreat. Dan really only two things yet to be determined tonight. One will be the final score and the statistics will hold and number two am I going to get another one of the uh, two dollars dropped on my head tonight like well, I did last night. Well realistically the odds are pretty good at that. There was pandemonium all around me. I'm not used to being that popular. Smith in the slot and that shot hit a stick and goes up into the net. You are considered um, a local legend I believe is what they call it in my own mind. Well, you know, there's you have you have quite the following if you were on Twitter you'd not understand how the people just crave for you to be on Twitter because they want to be able to talk with you. Well I think really the only thing they're going to be concerned about is Monday morning when you can talk Coach Hastings Hastings. get to talk about this and get things set up for the probably the conference championship series. Well he will uh, join us at 9 10 Monday morning on the KTOE morning blend as he does every Monday morning at 9 10. McNeely after he lost the puck in the offensive zone is back to play it. So this last period where there's a lot of time where there was no pressure and the Mavericks are able to get their lines changed and set up the way they want to. Smith. Amit with a quick shot that Fessenden will kick out. Salerno. Chipped into the zone. By Lottengren and here comes Amit. Headman's a pass for Dallas Gerads. Played out of the zone and Amit will fire it right back in. Fessenden has a 4.54 goals against. The save percentage is not good at 861. As we've seen, uh, his team uh, tends to leave him uh, hung out to dry a little bit defensively. So as they get older and learn to play defense a little bit better, that'll probably get better for him. That shot gets blocked by Dallas Gerads to the near side out of play and actually into the group. Dan, we have 25 individuals here who just arrived from Spain today and they are watching their first ever hockey game. And you see them all down there yeah. along the boards. They are here at South Central College for the culinary program ah. and it's, it's in its, its exchange program. Nice. So can you imagine getting off a plane from Spain and going to a hockey game going to hockey. Yeah. I mean, no offense, I don't know how prevalent an indoor ice even is in Spain. That I'm not sure. But they're seeing a 7 0. They're going, uh, this one team is really, really good at it. <laughs> yeah, they're watching one third ranked team yep. in the country. I yep. mean, that's a treat. And Mac. it's not to take anything away from the Chargers. Uh, they know that they've, uh, that they've got their work cut out for them to get better as freshmen and sophomores and the hope would be was you get to be sophomores and juniors things start to turn your way and when you're juniors and seniors you start to really feel what uh, what's you know turning the program around is all about. Mike Corbett said they spent three hundred fifty thousand dollars on uh, weight room uh, for the entire athletic program. 
and they need to get these guys in the weight room. I mean, you, you look at the Maverick players over the four years, how much bigger and stronger they've become, and as a team, how strong they are. Shot from Gerard is off a skate into the corner. Carried out to center ice by Peyton Francis. Francis and Hookinson after it. Francis spins it up on top. Bond with the shot. Bounces off a body after the initial save was made. Michaelis for the Mavericks. Wink wide for Souter. Souter. Pass intended for Michaelis. It's picked up by Danchenko. Merkley dumps it in. Souter. Again for Michaelis. He is one of two players on the ice yet, still with an opportunity to try to get that hat trick. Talked about it last night. Mavericks haven't had one since Max Coda got one to open up the season last year in October in North Dakota. And what an unlikely place and what an unlikely player to get a hat trick. Max Coda played his guts out for this team for four years, but was not a high scoring player. But to get three against a good team like North Dakota is surprising. Whistle behind the play as Wood is going to go, and we'll take a break. Come back with the Maverick power play, and they're ahead 7 0. Maybe we'll be able to pick up the penalty here as we're back uh, early in the third in Mankato on a Saturday night of hockey and see Wood. That was an elbow up high. Mavericks one for three on the man advantage. It's a shot to the head basically is the official call. Toomey with the one timer follow up there for Napravnik. Toomey didn't get all of it. He got a lot of it, but I don't think he got everything he wanted on that shot. To the point gets past McNeely and the Mavericks will have to come back. Andy Carroll. Smith. Carroll behind the net left off for Smith one more time. Another one of those. Multiple player scrums the Mavericks. Trying to control but it's actually going to be played down the ice by the Chargers with still one minute left to go in the power play opportunity. 13 06 left to go in the contest. Mavericks will elect to bring out a new set of power play. Guys in the yellow in fact uh, Hookinson doesn't spend a lot of time on the power play but he's out there with Amit Smith Lutz and Jeremko with a lot of speed into the zone. Jeremko up on top will feed Hookinson. Played behind the net picked up by Coyle. That one's chipped off to the boards but Hookinson is at the point to hold. Bouncing puck for Jeremko. Lutz Smith. Somebody's lost a stick out there, Dan. That was actually uh, Bailey Newton. He's going to have a chance to come over to the bench. Say, if the Mavericks were to score on that play with as many bouncing pucks as they had from pass to pass to pass, it would have been incredible because it was just bouncing all over the place. Clear an attempt is fired into the Huntsville bench, and so the faceoff will stay in the Maverick offensive zone with just three seconds left to go. In fact, Wood is already on. His skates ready to get back into the action. Coach Corbett took that uh, pocket, threw it up into the fans. Really nice guy. We uh, always enjoy when he's in town and get a chance to speak with him. He's pretty honest yes, where everything stands. So. Yes. I mean, he. We talked last yeah. night and just the, you know, as uh, Shy to come back to play here. We we talked about last night the fact that again everyone w well aware of the fact the Mavericks one of seven teams in the current alignment of the conference opting to get out of it in a couple years a few weeks after that announcement was made in the fall Huntsville decided they were going to leave the WCHA as well but they you know really at this point Dan probably don't definitively have a home right and they said they would love to be the eighth team in the conference and right now they are not that team but they they are trying to show that they're willing to do the things that they need to do to become that team don't know if this weekend helps yeah. a whole lot no, in that it's, in it's all certainly, honesty it certainly doesn't uh, but I think it is as much um, institutionally 
are you willing to to put the money up to put a program in place that will compete at the Division One level and be an asset yeah. to the conference? And the thing is, as we were talking about with Coach Corbett, we ask him a question like that. He's going to give us an honest answer. Yeah. He's never kind of hid behind the fact. And, you know, they're doing a lot of things right in Huntsville. You talked about the money spent uh, in the weight room, um, you know, talked about some personnel things going on with athletic director and the president and it does not happen overnight I can tell you that no and what's happening here at Minnesota State didn't happen overnight uh, and it's still a work in progress Souter spins away from a couple of chargers out for Michaelis and the circle held in at the point Connor Mackey Put in on that and Fessenden will cover up. As good as it's been here at Minnesota State and everything that they've been able to build until you win the NCAA tournament, it's not going to feel right. You get a win this year, even if it's just one, uh, it'll start feeling like, yes, you know, we, we're at that elite, elite level. But if you can't win the NCAA tournament, what have you done? And this team is this team has got yeah. to win a game at least. Well, and, I, and I think they're more than yeah. I mean, this team is capable of winning the whole thing. There's no question in my mind. They are. You just got to get over the hump, get that first one. Yeah, that's one of the key reasons why this group of seven stayed intact and are back yet this year for one Very last true. shot. That one hops right over the top of the crossbar as it hits some traffic. The shot from the Provnik. No, there's no question about it. There were players who could have left and didn't. And the reason they didn't is because they feel they have some unfinished business. Mackey for French. The Provnik. I was looking down at the top of the uh, crease and McNeely was down there in the, uh, the dirty area trying to find a way maybe to get a shot. Rotenberger has it poked away from him by McNeely. The Provnik taps it ahead. Here comes French, and the Mavericks have a few numbers into the zone, although it's poked away from French, and now here comes Hickey the other way. Smith is there to clean things up. Off for Amit. Dryden McKay has been tested a little bit more tonight than he was last night. He's seen five more shots, but he had a couple of them that were a little bit more high leverage than last evening. Jeremko through the center circle as it poked away from him. Still a loose puck. It comes all the way in on net. Fessenden will cover up and we'll take our break halfway through the third period of play. Mavericks in control for Mankato 7 0. Mike Hastings and his Maverick Club chasing another McNaughton Cup. They're five points ahead going into the night's contest and you can see uh, their name on that list a few times in recent years. Magic number with a victory tonight, which seems assured, will be down to two. Any combination of two points for the Mavericks or a loss of two points by the Beavers, and the Mavericks win the regular season. Doer just dumps it into a corner as he was near getting out of the zone. I think the key for the Mavericks here the next nine minutes is stay out of the box, keep as much offensive zone time as possible so we can tick this clock down and finish this one up the way you want to. Rivera fires it in and Fessenden doesn't even make no. any hesitation on no. it. He's just going to cover up and take a face off in the zone. And More fans hung around for the third period than I would have guessed, Don, but um, it's not as full as it was no. uh, as the game got going this evening. Over 4,500 in the building last night. I think our crowd was a bit bigger tonight. Here's a chance for Michaelis, and he puts one in on that bouncing puck still up in the air. And then I think one of the Chargers took a swat at it before it would have maybe hit the ice, and that would have been in the crease area. Yeah, that one hung up there a yeah. long time. That went way up. Again, Michaelis with two tonight. Also, Rivera with two on senior night. Other goal scores for the Mavericks, Souter, Lutz, and Jeremko. Nicest thing is, is my second period stat sheet is still clean so I can work off that one haven't had to write all over it like I did last evening. Chargers win the draw but the Mavericks pull the puck away with Souter up on top Smolik for Michaelis. Michaelis with Lundgren on him. Michaelis will bring it out in front and then put it right through the crease. Hookinson. I think if you get a chance, you're going to feed 20 whenever you can. 
lifted out to center ice again this. We talked about at the end of the first period Michaelis with those goals is. And Chenko brings it into the zone left at the line. And that one is actually going to come out and so an offside call but. Uh, Michaelis with a couple more goals tonight now three on the weekend 70 in his career and that is the all time division one leader as far as goal scored for Maverick. He uh, came into tonight's game along with Shane Joseph tied at 68. Bryce Gervais was up there as well 67 so uh, some pretty talented offensive players for the Mavericks Tim Wolf with 65 that number is going to stand for a while that 70 number is going to sit for a while there's a name out of the past Jesse Rooney on some of those teams that scored against Air Force and Canisius he also had 67 so pretty talented guys but again Mikhail is now 70 goals in his career. I don't know if Nathan Smith is the next guy who you'd say would have a chance. I mean, he's 63 goals away from that, so that's a long way to go at the moment, but he's clearly a very skilled freshman who's going to be with this team for a number of years and have a chance to put up a lot of goals, but he's a long way to go before he can get anywhere near 70. Amit. Puts one in on net, kicked into the corner. Napravnik will track it down. Salerno is there for the Chargers. Just lifted out near the line, bouncing puck that stays in the zone. Toomey down low, trying to feed Jeremko. You know, that 70 number down obviously takes a ton of skill, but it takes luck too. Not in luck uh, on puck luck, but luck that you stayed healthy for as much as he did. Jeremko tees one up and Fessenden lets that go into his. Glove and now James is tied up along with Jeremko. Referee is trying to separate them without having to get too out of hand here. But you know, you play that many games in college hockey, and so many things can happen that could take you out. And to not get injured and play as many games as he's played, uh, it, it takes a, you have to have a little bit of luck. Obviously, there's a lot of work involved and everything too, but. There's other players who are very good who don't get that lucky and you get a weird skate uh, that goes the wrong way and takes an ankle out or something. So we've been blessed to watch him play for an awful long time and I mean his first real injury of any significance coming just a month ago. Kalis as we've talked about his uh, goals is actually point total is now up to 156 at six points behind Matt Leitner. And eight behind Aaron Fox. Uh, getting to those numbers was not in doubt before the injury. Still has an outside uh, outside shot, maybe at those, depending on how long the season goes in the postseason. You gotta like his chances. Walker Doerr, face off circle down low, gets redirected, still a loose puck. It's picked up by Doerr out in front as that was Rivera trying to maybe play it off a body and it's sent down the ice. I mean, he's averaging a point a game. If he averages a point a game for the rest of the games and the Mavericks play enough games, which certainly seems like there's a chance he should be very close. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, just even in WCHA, right. if you play the minimum number of games and keep winning, that's five more and you got two more left in the regular season. Carroll breaks up that play. Loose puck is picked up at center ice. Francis trying to play it out in front. Still a bouncing puck that Lottengren almost had a shot at. Francis up on top and played to Finson, and that pass is errant. And you see the look after the pass, the player just going, oh, you know, you can, you can tell that it's been a long, long weekend and as part of a very long season. Just two wins for the Chargers. That'll come all the way down in an icing call. The Chargers will head back to Minneapolis yet tonight to get an early morning flight back to Huntsville with a connection through Atlanta. Ask uh, the coaches have most teams. I know when the Mavericks go down to Huntsville, they always fly into Nashville right. and take it about a two hour charter down to Huntsville and they fly right into Huntsville, right into Huntsville. So when you look at the cost. It's um, it's kind of a push for as far as they're concerned. Amit and they're flying Delta. I would take make Delta sure get, United. Make sure you get the Biscoff cookie. <laughs> those are your favorite. Oh. You rave about those. I mean, if uh, if I had to pick a cookie almost anywhere in the world, that would be it. No, all truth be told, yes. you have a trip coming up next week. Will you, yeah. will you be utilizing that uh, air carrier? We are not. Oh, that's too bad. I know. Trust me, I know. You put the plug in, but it didn't work. Huh? It did not. Yes. Uh, that was the original plan, but it was 
Amit gets yeah. tripped up on the play and hopefully he gets up OK. Yeah, but, but this is what we're talking about. You know that any kind of little thing can happen that will take you and, and injure you. And Logan but, goes to the box. Yeah, he knew it right away. And yeah. He's in the box on a uh, actually going to call cross checking. Wyatt Amat seems like he's OK. Yep, just a little bit of a little bit of a stick there and down he went and for a second I thought he might have injured his leg but it seemed like he was okay. Five and a half left to go in the contest the Mavericks on now their fifth power play of the night. Zmolik. Hukinson. Charlie Gerard. Michaelis is on the ice. Along the goal line, puts one in on net. The Kessler makes that save. Mavericks a real line. Who can tease one? He heard the post yeah. on that one. It actually, I think it was partial save. He heard the pad, and then Michaelis comes back with a quick wrister that's on the side. There have been a half a dozen posts this weekend for the Mavericks, or this this score could have got out of hand. Michaelis tips one just wide as that was a pass centered there by Zamoli. Here's Charlie Gerard trying to feed Michaelis. Neudecker has it, takes it into the zone. He likes to turn around and just take some more time off the clock, putting it back to Coil. Long leap pass. There's Bolio, and there's one of those saves, and it's underneath the yep. pads of. Dryden McKay, and that's one thing the Mavericks do not want to see. Why would that be down? 51 31, the attendance for tonight's game. Not a bad crowd. Mavericks coming into the weekend, they were ranking 15th in the country as far as attendance. But uh, that crowd, uh, actually, that'll rank top 20 all time. Nice giveaway tonight and senior night and a very nice giveaway. The baseball caps that they gave away are pretty sharp and I think it was the 25 Spanish people that put it over the yeah, top tonight. Right. Yeah, I as far as the right. crowd. No fifth. I mean, uh, capacity is a little under 4,900, so right. that's a sellout tonight. First of many we hope to see next month as well in the playoffs. Carroll. Emmett down low. The Prodnik trying to get one to Toomey. It's broken up. Napravnik, Amit, Carroll over for Napravnik and his one timer is whistled just wide here on the near side. Carroll. That one is teed up on the shot by Amit. And it'll just tap it into the corner. Ongen is out of the box and Chargers at full strength with three and a half left to go. Merkley behind his own net. French and Toomey after here comes Carroll. Thought about one shot, comes back with it, and that one is armed into the corner by Fessenden, and then it's sent all the way down the ice. Race for the puck. Emmett will get there first, and it's an icing call against the Chargers. Mavericks putting 15 shots on goal here in the third period to just four for the Chargers. So those numbers are getting a little out of hand. It was 30 to 14 after two periods. And now 45 18 as we get down to the final three minutes and six seconds of a Saturday night. And a few more fans saying they believe that this one's over and they're starting to grab their coats and head out. Off the draw, the puck is knocked aside by Walker Doerr behind the net, out in front. That one is carried off a leg. Merkley, Dallas Gerads after it. Gerads now with Coil on him. Still behind the net. McNeely pokes it away as on a clearing attempt. Merkley. Walker Dewar spins away from one check from Newton. McNeely down low and that one is just missed on a tip by Zmolik. Lottengen will carry the other way. It's past one player and then a nice save by Dryden <laughs> McKay. So 
The shutout stays intact, Dan, as we take our last break. 7-0 lead for the Mavericks. 2-11 left to go here in the third period of play as the Mavericks look to complete a weekend sweep of Alabama Huntsville. Look at Mike Hastings there. We'll talk with him in just a few minutes on our postgame show. Vincent along the boards. Hukinson will step in defensively, but Salerno has it out in front. A couple of quick shots by the Chargers. Bond with that shot, and that one is going to go off into the corner as Jeremko and Allen are after it. Now on the near side, Lucas Bond. Salerno, that one is sent wide. Most action we've seen offensively yeah. from the Chargers the entire period. Lutz. Left off, here comes Jeremko. Jeremko trying to feed one over to Smith. Probably could have taken the shot. Beavers up 1 0 up in Anchorage. Not unexpected. Zmolik dumps it in. Salerno for Jeffers. It's broken up over there by Rivera. Now in front of the Maverick bench, Carroll will pick things up. Spins away from Jeffers and carries to center ice. Doer. Rivera. Played to the near side. Picked up by Neudecker. He's into the zone. Kicked out there and a nice defensive play by Carroll. Amit has it. He lifts it out to center ice. Here's a race for the puck. Walker Doer with Rivera down low. Score! It ends up a two on none, and the Mavericks finish it off to finish off the weekend in style. And it's a hat trick for the senior, Nick Rivera. And it'll take a minute to clear all the hats off the ice now. Nice play there. Uh, again, obviously, Dewar coming in yeah. could have taken the shot, but I think realizing it's an opportunity here for Nick Rivera to uh, make a little bit of history. As the hats continue to come out of the stands, and Nick Rivera on his last regular season home game in Mankato gets his first career hat trick. His ninth goal of the season, his 33rd of his career. And for a guy, 33 goals, obviously not the biggest offensive production need, but he's had some huge goals, uh, obviously, uh, in his time here wearing a Maverick sweater, including last year's game winner in overtime in the conference championship game. But talk about a guy who's poured his heart and soul into this program and has spent so much time. And you see the moment they're sharing right now. The effort, I mean, a two-year captain for this team and what he does as far as specialty teams and so pivotal to Coach Hastings as far as that leadership group that he talks about, that's a nice moment. Doerr getting the assist at 19-20 for an 8-0 Maverick lead. Love the goal and want to acknowledge the play again by Walker Doerr. Yep. Good at taking the shot but wanted to make sure and set things up for his teammate on the play. And Mike Hastings has said last evening that the way that fourth line played last night made it real easy to run those same four lines out there again tonight. Yeah, whether they stay intact for next weekend, we'll have to see. I would certainly consider it at least. At this point, no real reason not to because, right. again, uh, uh, the the, uh, the competition will get a whole lot stiffer next week. There's no question about that. But this is a team that uh, you put 18 goals on the board on a weekend. That's that's a lot of offense. And here comes Gerads. Walker Dewar one more time tries to set up Dallas Gerads on the play. Still in the zone. Just driving down into the zone. Francis does, and that'll be offside call, and they're going to let the time run out. And probably not a bad thing, and the Mavericks finish things off on an exceptionally dominating weekend for the Mavericks. The 10-0 win last night, and they come back, and maybe not as impressive as far as uh, the full 60 minutes, but it was never in doubt tonight. The Mavericks at 8 Nothing win, four goals in the first, three in the second, and just that goal by Rivera here in the third. He's got the hat trick tonight, also scoring for the Mavericks. Souter, Michaelis with a couple of goals, 
Lutz and Jeremko and yet another shutout for Dryden McKay back to back shutouts on the weekend and now for Dryden McKay 10 shutouts on the season 14 in his career. We saw some of his career numbers a little bit early and the Mavericks certainly seemed poised to make a deep run not only in the WCHA but the NCAA playoffs as well. Outscoring the Chargers 18 to nothing on the weekend. We're going to keep it right here to uh, some of the handshakes and the post game festivities. Is again, it's senior night in downtown Mankato at the Mayo Clinic Health System Event Center. Quite that a performance by every player in purple and gold tonight, Don, and for the, that matter, this weekend. 18 goals in two games. I, I don't remember a weekend none. like this. No. Yeah. no, certainly not in our time together in the last eight years. And it, yes, uh, the Chargers had something to do with that. They're not a team at this point that can compete with the Mavericks, but they gave it their best all weekend long. And Mike Corbett, I know, believes that he's got the kids that can turn this program around in the coming years. But for the moment, the Mavericks are just too strong up and down the lineup. Lots of guys moving up the rankings as far as career and season marks here tonight. We talked about the goals being scored by Michaelis. He and Scheid as far as where they stand on the all-time scoring list for defenseman Parker Toomey a big weekend. He's now six all-time at Division One level scoring for the Mavericks with 128 points in his career. And the Mavericks again as they uh, get off the ice for the last time in the regular season. They're at Bemidji State next weekend to take on the Beavers. Beavers, as you saw a few moments ago, an early 1-0 lead against Anchorage. So everything seems pointed to an in-state rivalry next weekend that will determine the WCHA championship. Looks like Coach Hastings is set with us, and so we'll turn it over to Dan McCarger. 8-0 final score this evening. The Mavericks over the Chargers. Coach, congratulations. What an incredible weekend on senior weekend. Uh, your players who have been your players for the last four years shine also bright this weekend yeah very happy for them um, they put a lot of a lot of work and preparation and just a lot of work in, in helping elevate our program and so I'm really proud of them it's great to see them do it in front of family and friends uh, and again just an outstanding showing as far as our crowd uh, coming out and supporting us the way that they have Mike, after a 10-0 victory last evening, it would have been real easy for your club to show up and put up a 5-3 victory tonight and get the three points, but they did not do that. They came out and played tonight like it really, really mattered, and clearly it did matter to this team. Well, and I, I've got to credit that group of seven. Uh, they, they do a phenomenal job. At, uh, and as you can see, Nicky going out, it's great to see him have the night that he had um, because uh, they're example setters. They carry the torch for us, and I thought they did a great job all weekend. The addition of Souter and Michaelis back to the lineup clearly makes a difference. That does. It provides us with a little bit more depth, and what it does is it pushes our top down. Um, uh, the, the jobs that Josh French, Nathan Smith, uh, Jake Uramko, uh, guys that we have, you know, and, and Jared Spooner, who wasn't out or wasn't this week in this weekend, uh, in the absence of the guys that you're already discussing, they did a phenomenal job. But having those guys back in the lineup gives us energy. Uh, it, it gives us uh, some emotional lift here now as we're getting ready for our last weekend against Bemidji. A little bit of scoreboard watching that you can do over the next couple of hours, but either way, you've got a big series at Bemidji next week. Yeah, we've just got to keep pushing the rock up the hill, you know, and, and tonight the guys did that. And, uh, they deserve uh, an off day tomorrow and get some rest and get prepared for Monday. Nearly 10,000 in the building this weekend. Uh, huge crowds both nights, and what a great reflection on this club, and congratulations. Uh, thank you. I want to say thanks to everybody that decided to come out watch this last couple of games, and hopefully we'll see you here in the first round of the playoffs. That's Maverick Hockey Coach Mike Hastings. 8-0, the Mavericks of Minnesota State Mankato over the Chargers of Alabama Huntsville. We'll take a break and come back. We'll have highlights from this one, out-of-town scores, and more on Maverick Hockey Weekend. A weekend where they will return to Mankato with the McDonald Cup, and they are poised.
and ready to go for that in-state rival game next week against Bemidji State. Mavericks, uh, eight win, eight nothing winners tonight, eighteen to nothing on the weekend. You, you get lost in the fact that Dryden McKay gets back-to-back -back shutouts, but offensively, I mean, the Mavericks just unleashed such a repertoire of weapons. It was unbelievable. Well, the, the way they scored, I mean, they they had two on ones, three on twos. They scored uh, in their normal offense. Uh, they scored on the rush. They scored with uh, with um, you know, slap shots with uh, backhanders. They scored every possible way this weekend that you could ever think of. The only way they didn't score was shorthanded. And we talked about yeah. uh, I mean, they hit the pipe at least yeah. six times oh, on yeah. the weekend. It, it, it sounds ridiculous. It could have been worse. It could have been worse. Yeah. But, again, it ends up being an 8 nothing win tonight for the Mavericks. we got a, a few highlights we can choose from. We're not going to bring you all eight goals, but we'll start things off back in the first period of play with some of the highlights. Begin with the power play. Lucas Souter, his sixth of the season from Ian Scheid and Charlie Girard. At 4.05, it's 1-0 Mavericks. Nick Rivera, his first of the evening from Andy Carroll. And uh, Walker Dewar at 7.07 makes it 2-0 Mavericks. Mark Michaelis, his first of the night from Lucas Souter at 12.47 makes it 3-0 Mavericks. And then to round out the scoring in the first period, Reggie Lutz, his 11th of the year from Jake Jaremko and Ian Scheid at 19.13. And it, uh, they had to review that one, but uh, it was clearly a good goal. And the Mavericks go on to an 8-0 round tonight. We look at uh, the stats from the game this evening, Don. I believe we're going to look at those. There we are. Shots on goal ends up 47-19. Attempted 69-43. The block shots you can see there. Mavericks 1 for 5 on the power play. The Chargers 0 for the weekend on the power play. And faceoff 1 uh, battle. Mavericks win that by 13-35-22. Out of town scores, Bowling Green is final now over Ferris 3 1. Bemidji leads Anchorage 1 0 in the uh, first inning of play. Penn State scores twice in 30 seconds in the third period to win 3 2 over Minnesota tonight. Northern Michigan over Lake Superior 4 1. St. Cloud 2, North Dakota 1. That's a final. That means that the Mavericks will probably be the number one team in the pairwise after this weekend. And UMD leading Western Michigan 2 1 in the third period, Don. So the Mavericks again uh, with the weekend sweep here, and they head up to Bemidji State. I was not here for the series about a month ago, but it was I know a great series. This Bemidji team's legit; they're real, and uh, a much deeper team, more yes. offensive-minded that we've seen in the fa uh, past. They, and they are very similar to what the Mavericks do. They can get up and down the ice. They've got good goaltending. They've got good defense. It should be a great weekend of hockey. But I think clearly the two best teams in the conference oh. as we've seen all year yeah. long, and it's, it's it's justifiable that right. it comes down to this weekend. They have separated themselves dramatically. Uh, over the last 10, 12 weeks, and uh, there's every reason to believe it should be a great weekend of hockey, but the Mavericks need to go up there and get two points somewhere along the way, and uh, the hope is they'll take care of that on Friday night so you don't have to worry about doing it on Saturday night. And then after that, the march to the Jeff yep. Sauer Trophy begins, and that's our next broadcast here on the Maverick Hockey Weekend. Again, the Mavericks at Bemidji next weekend, and then we host the uh, first round of the WCHA playoffs. March 6th is that first Friday night game, best two of three series, so we hope the Mavericks can do the job that weekend. They would be home the following weekend as well. And again, we anticipate potentially a Bemidji State Ma Maverick matchup again to close out the WCHA playoffs. That would be on Saturday, March 21st. So a lot of hockey yet to be yeah. played. And there's no question the Mavericks certainly, as you mentioned, might be the number one team in the country after tonight's uh, decisions get decided. Would, this team yeah. is poised for a deep run. They, they certainly are. Get the first one. Let's get the first one and then get the second one and worry about going to a frozen four. But right now, this team is, has everything you need. They've got offense. They've got defense. They've got great goaltending. They've got good coaching. Uh, and they just had that feel about them now that they're you know pretty healthy that uh, this team is ready to go. All right. And I'm sure Mike Hastings would say, let's not look too deep down the road. Let's take care of business first. And that means, again, the Mavericks Stop and the and Beavers. Stop smell the roses along the way. Yeah, that's right. Mavericks and the Beavers next weekend up at Bemidji. We'll see you in a couple weeks again, Dan McCarger, myself, Don Westfall, and the rest of the students from Bethany Lutheran College. We thank you for joining us this weekend for Senior Weekend in Mankato. Mavericks ride it out in fine style tonight. It's the Mavericks, an 8-0 win over the Chargers.